Welcome again, everyone. Jerry's old guy review and winner is no longer coming. Winner is here. Yowie, you are the worst. Knock it off. So this was a particularly difficult video for me. I really had to use my brain. David. This is for David, who wanted to know some of my shock tuning tricks. Well, let me tell you. Let's start off with, I'm cheap, and I've only ever had in 30 years of living in Alaska, I have only had one hobby shop at a time. So, one of them carried very few parts. So, we're going to roll all the way back to 1995. Basically, you had what was available for the vehicle you owned. So, let's just look at it. Axial. So, there's an axial shock off of an SCX-10-2. Here's a shock from an SCX-10 OG. That's the shock. Now, that we moved ahead to 2008. So let's go back to the 90s. And this is the kind of thing you got. Now, for an aftermarket, it was pretty neat. This is like if you have a four-wheeler, snow machine, you sucker. You have a screw on here that you can adjust if it's going to zoom. So this is the weakest. And then you pull it down, crank it all the way up to max. So this old feller came out before you had the pre-made adjustable shock adjusters that were built into the shock. Super cool. This, the shock was only that, that big. So that's all the oil you could put in there. So basically you were relying on that spring, which the companies all made their stuff different sizes. So it was hard. So you got stuff like this. Friction shock or one with oil in it, but that's all you had. Whoop, and it just went flying. So I never really got big into the shocks. Now, Traxxas came along with a novel item, which Hell, on some of their models, they still do. And knockoff Chinese companies still do them. So you'd get your parts tree, and you got these spacers. And they went on the shocks. And they were different sizes, so you could adjust the tension that way. Now, once Traxxas came along, of course shock technology was growing but say back in the day so I've got this shock I think it's it's too it's too stiff so without buying a shock spring you know there we go I've eliminated a little bit of tension until of course it 
gets to that point. Now, this thing's got this this old technology, rubber boot so it doesn't bottom out. Now, this is too stiff. So what 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 would I do? So I would try to research what came with it. A lot of the RTRs and even a lot of the kits didn't have what was actually what shock oil they put in them. But boom, 30 weight. So I don't like how this performs. Boom. Here's some 25 weight. So empty it out and pick your poison. Really light trucks. I generally go with a really light shock oil. You know, that comes with me weighing it. You know, five pounds or less. Yeah, I'm going to use 25 on that. Especially if it's got a Lexan body. But now, when you start adding details, like my Axial OG, it's got a heavy rear end on it. Even with the battery, front end still light, I would probably be successful with the 30 weight. But that's the catch-22 when it comes to shock adjustment for crawlers. So generally, you've got a touring car. You've got a semi-truck, a military truck. Um, let me. I'm looking around. Well, we'll start with those. A basher. A basher I'm going to want to use heavyweight because that truck is going to be doing some craziness. But if you are a huge jumper basher, you don't want it to be too heavy so you don't blow your shocks out. Because those big heavy trucks, bonsai, can bend the shock piston. Now... Here's, here is some cheats. Now, in the early days, a lot of these vehicles came, I did have that, but these white ones are better. So, you've got piston tops. A lot of the older shocks came with them, and they have holes in them. You have generally, you know, a one, a two, a three, four. The holes allow fluid through faster. So if you want your action to be slower, say for a heavy truck, for a truck that's articulating, you want to go with a lighter hole. So maybe a two hole compared to, you know, a four hole. If you're making a rally truck, you want those shocks, the pistons going, but a lot of companies don't do this. You can, you know, different different weight springs. You can go that route. Nowadays, the problem with RC manufacturers is just like full-size vehicle manufacturers. This is the same manufacturer, but this is the concept. So, OG Axial. Big old, big old body on that. SCX-10-2. Smaller body. You can't use the piston in this one and this one, and vice versa. You can't really use a lot of things on these to include the springs. So, you run into the situation where you've got, like I do, you've got a just an overflowing box of axial bits. You've got a bunch of springs. So you let me think. So I'm thinking, I'm looking at Traxxas. So the Traxxas bodies are bigger. So I can't use the springs I already have. So I'm somewhat forced to buy 
Traxxas or a company that is making a Traxxas clone, copy. God, we know they're not copying them because then they'd be sued. But now you're in the situation where you can't find your springs because you got a weird shape, weird size, and that's where Team Loshi comes in. So this is a collection from uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, the Loshi Mini B. Whoa. Let me get my finger out of there. Are you going to zoom? Worthless. This is a collection of Mini B different size shocks. So, what is it? There's two of each. So, wow, Horizon Hobby. We couldn't even write it on there, huh? So, I'm assuming soft, medium, hard. If you are in a pickle, so to speak, you could buy some of these and actually put them inside of the shock body, even with some fluid in it. You can't get stiffer springs. Your adjuster doesn't work. Shock oil doesn't work, which I wouldn't understand why all those options wouldn't work. Unless you were trying to lighten it up and the spring was too hard and you put 25 weight oil in it. The most hillbilly thing I've ever seen, actually, this is, which one is that on? This one. This was the most hillbilly one I've ever seen for soft shocks is a hunk of rubber. Crazy. A hunk of rubber, it's going to bottom out, and that truck is sure not going to fall over, theoretically. But... These are my cheats for springs, pistons, trying to get the action if you just don't want to buy something. Now, also, if you're playing with your shocks a lot or you own any Vanquish shock, um, eh, my Red Cat Marksman, any element shock, um, wow, that's about it for right now. That leak like a sieve. Now, I had the chemical version, and I'll be damned, my Miss Diane had her grubby mitts on it the last time. I've got some green plumbers stuff that I put around the threads when I put them back together so they don't leak. Other than that, Teflon tape, always a good option. Or, if you want to spend an outrageous amount of money, you get some of this fast tape from Odie. This stuff is a little bit pricier, but man, is it good. And with shocks, you can only use one wrap. It's not like fixing the sink. One wrap is the bare minimum. But... Now, if you've watched any of this and said, that is friggin' hillbilly, Jerry. Hillbilly, why am I even watching this channel right now? Because this is crazy. I want a good set of shocks. Well, I'm going to tell you, go buy any Traxxas shocks. You got to do all the hillbilling rigs if you want your uh, vanquish not to leak like crazy. Um, my elements only occasionally leak. I'll tell you what, none of my axials leak. Come on, China, let's steal some of those. But my new favorite, just for the price and what you get in the package. Yeah, racing. These are the aluminum big bore. Oh, where's my little... They're go something, they're called. Where is my other one at? Let me see. 
dang it, what did they call this? Um, oh. Wow. So, it's the Big Boar Go RTR. These shocks, these are the 65 millimeters. I put the 70 millimeters on my Mashigan. These are metal shocks that come with so many goodies from $23 to $27, depending on your lengths. What a deal! So, these, I'm not going to open this one because this is my 65s that I haven't opened yet. So, you get already set two shocks. They're completely built. And you get two extra springs. So, you have soft, medium, and hard. You get new balls. And there's different ones on here. There's metal balls that you can screw in. Man, this is horrible. You got ones that you can screw right into your chassis. Listen to that. Nice balls. And you get... It comes already built, so you've got the four-hold piston in it already. And this one comes with... You've got two holes and three holes. So you've got... Three different piston top options. Three different shock options. You know, they're big bore. You know, they worked on that. I haven't really looked at them compared to some of the other rigs. But, hell, for, for 20 bucks, even if we go up to the longest one, which I think was 80, maybe it was 90, 27 bucks for a set. That's a smoking deal. And because of the world we live in now, compared to, it, it's still tough for me. Because my RC guy carries a lot of stuff. That's where I got these Loshi things from. But he carries a lot of the name brand stuff. So it's expensive. Anything from Vanquish is expensive. And why would I want to buy a shock that already leaks like a sieve that I've got here? So, it's still tough to get out of that mindset, but these are all little tips. You know, nowadays, that's the biggest thing, shock oil. I'm big with shock oil. If I'm crawling and that ass end just folds over and that truck always wants to tip, you know, you have to thoroughly test it. That may be just that one spot makes your truck do that don't automatically just say okay it flipped over so i gotta i gotta replace these shocks right off the bat you need to test it in all kinds of different environments before you just jump into it now i know some of you are saying wow is he annoying today he has not cursed he has not cracked any jokes sorry i was focused I mean, I get to stand here and, you know, drink and talk. So, David let me know that I just babble on, that I help anyone else. In my current shock tuning options, my thing is to keep them from leaking, stiffen them up a bit if they're soft, Hard, you're really limited with hard without buying new springs. I mean, springs are springs. Um, some of these options, like these guys here, you know, I got a blue spring, I got a yellow spring. And just like I told you with the manufacturers, everybody's got a different weight rating, and they generally go by the weight of the truck. But they just can't say soft, medium, hard. It's got to be weight, and all the, you know, here's Yao Racing, the blue ones, uh, I want to say the blue ones are probably, medium, 
But on most research I was doing before I got to this video, most companies, blue is soft. So the whole thing's different because I have different colors for the different brands. Everybody's doing something different. So springs, shock oil, keep them from leaking. Those are my holy trinity right there. So let me know what you think. Did I help? Did I confuse? Should I drink less while I'm talking? David, you can go crazy in the in the comment section or you can just email me. I never forget about you. I'm always thinking about you. Don't email you enough. But for everyone else, like and subscribe. Let me know if you're helpful. And I will talk to you on the next one.